Today's lesson is I use speech marks for dialogue. Let's just check that we understand that learning objective. Speech marks are the little things that go around speech marks that go around words being uh, spoken. Uh, said Mr. J, if I did say that, speech marks go around the words being spoken, said Mr. J, because I said that. So it goes all around the words that are being said. Dialogue, well, dialogue, dialogue, dialogue is a conversation between two people, dialogue, two or more people, okay? Why is it really important to use speech marks for dialogue? Well, the reason is it really enhances our work. And remember, we are all about enhancing our work, making it better, improving it. If we have a conversation between the characters, yeah, I'm gonna learn a lot more about them. It makes the story flow better, okay? We're humans, we talk to each other. Yeah, you wanna see it in a story, obviously. Now, to the problem. Speech has loads of rules. I tried to write some on here. They're not clear to read, okay? What I've done, if you go down to the link in the description below, if you click on video description, in it, I've put all the rules nice and clearly laid out for you, okay? So you need to just follow those rules, keep them in mind when you're doing your activity at the end of this. Let's go through just a couple of them, just to make sure that we, we remember them. We, speech marks obviously go around the words being spoken, okay? They don't go around the bit where you say who said it, because no one says that, do they? Yeah, you write it, but no one's saying it. Only the things that are being spoken. New line, new speaker, repeat it. New line, new speaker. Really important, okay? It's one of the key things when it comes to speech. Commas go before speech. Well, if it's not at the start of the sentence, we'll have a little look at that later, but quite complicated. Starts with a capital letter. Speech always starts with a capital letter because it is the start of their sentence. And we know that all sentences always start with a capital letter. So whether you're starting the sentence because you're writing it, we'd have a capital letter. When someone speaks, they need a capital letter because it's the start of their sentence. And number five, punctuation to close speech. Again, I'll show you what that looks like. Have a look at the explanation in the video description below and in there are all the rules for you, okay? Right, so when might I need to use such a thing and when might I have some dialogue? Well, I'm going to do a little drawing. Let's have a look. Here is my uh, guy, here's the, uh, the boy, there he is, and uh, here is my girl and the boy says to the girl, Hello. Now, I can tell the boy says it. He's got a speech bubble around it. It's coming out of his mouth. Okay. What does she say? You all right? Question mark. Okay. You all right? She says, hello. You all right? Let's go. There you go. A little bit of dialogue between two characters. I can tell who is speaking because the speech bubble goes around it. The only trouble is in my writing, if I'm doing a story, I can't really draw speech bubbles and I can't really draw the characters. Unless, of course, I'm making a comic, which would be great, and we're going to make a comic today. So, how am I going to put this into my writing? Well, I'm going to think about my rules. What were the rules again? Ah, oh, yeah, speech mark goes around the words being spoken. Hello. Starts with a capital letter. Ends with punctuation. Who said it? The boy. Said the boy. Okay. Hello, said the boy. Speech marks only going around the words that are being spoken. The only thing he said was hello, so the speech mark goes around it. Okay. Maybe he shouted it. Hello. So I'm going to have an exclamation mark. That's absolutely fine. Okay. Actually, if you look, I can rub this away and you can kind of see there are the uh, speech marks around it already. We're just getting rid of that speech bubble, really. Okay, another rule, new line, new speaker. You all right, replied the girl. So I'll have the girl replied, comma, start of her sentence, so it needs a capital letter. You all right? Question mark, she's asking a question close my speech. Okay, brilliant. Right, let's have another little go. I'll model one more time and then I'll tell you what your activity is. Hmm, if only I had some dialogue that I could think of. Um, Hello, 
Mr. Jordan. Have you seen my sock? Oh, yes. Here it is. Oh, thanks. Hmm. Okay. Bit of dialogue. So, Mrs. Jordan. That's who's speaking, so I'm going to put that there. Comma. What did she say? She says. Ah, I need to say she says. Mrs. Jordan said. Comma. Hello. Mr. Jordan. She paused a little bit, so I'm going to have a comma. Have you seen my socks? Have you seen my sock? Now, it was a question, so it needs a question mark. Am I done? I hope you're screaming at the screen. Of course I'm not. I haven't closed my speech. That's what she said. Hello, Mr. Jordan. Have you seen my sock? Okay. Now, do I carry on over here? Mr. Jordan replied, no. New line, because it's a new speaker. Oh, yes, comma. Here it is, replied Mr. Jordan. Okay, a reply is something in response. So instead of saying said all the time, I need to vary that up a little bit. I was a bit surprised to find that it was in my uh, pocket. So I had an exclamation mark. Thanks. She didn't really chat at me. She just said, thanks. Right, anything missing? Some of you might be saying, I don't tell you who said thanks, but the, maybe actually, here you go instead. Why don't you tell your partner or whoever you're sitting next to, whether it be a parent, why did I not need to say who said that last bit? Tell them now. Yeah, of course, the reason is, it's a new line, new speaker. So I've introduced the first person, Mrs. Jordan, what she said. I've then got the new person speaking, new line. Okay, and then because I've gone for my new line, I've missed my, my bit of space, I know it's another person replying. I'm not constantly having to say, said Mr. Jordan, said Mr. Jordan, replied Mr. Jordan, asked Mr. Jordan, blah, blah, blah. Once I've introduced the two characters, um, that's fine. If, obviously, if I introduced a new character, I'd have to say their name and who it was and what they were saying. Okay, if you want to come back to it, just to check, let's just check that everything's right in the right place. Speech marks going around the speech, that's what was being said. There's the punctuation before the speech ends. Here, where I uh, start it in the middle of the sentence, I've got a comma before the speech marks. Constantly going to a new line for a new speaker. Uh, yeah, it starts with a capital, oof, so many rules. Please look at the description below and then come back to this as a model if you want. Now, over to your activity and what you are going to do. Let's clear all of this off. What you're going to need is a blank piece of paper. So if you can get yourself a blank piece of paper now, that'll be really useful. If you've got lined paper as well, that'll be great, but don't worry if you don't, we can just do the writing on the back. So what you're going to do is, there is my piece of paper. And what I'd like us to do is split it up so that I've got eight boxes, okay? Now, you might be thinking to yourself, that's a little bit tricky to organise, well don't worry, it's not so bad. Here's my piece of paper, this is what we're going to do. We fold the paper in half, like this. Brilliant! Then what I'm going to do, take it like this again, I'm going to fold it in half again. And there we go. And one more time. There we go. Probably shouldn't be sticking stuff in my mouth at this time, but anyway, there you go. Right. Open it up and you will see on your piece of paper if you followed my instructions one two three four five six seven eight boxes really nice and clear this is going to be your comic strip now i was thinking of lots of different ideas that we could have for a comic strip you could do superhero you could do meeting someone in a park it's absolutely fine and it's totally up to you but i'm going to make mine uh the covid19 uh safety comic I think you can call yours absolutely whatever you want. And in it, I'm going to have a little bit of a dialogue, maybe a superhero, okay? Mr. Clean, I'm not sure, I haven't thought of the names in yet, okay? And he's going to come around and he's going to see people uh, doing things. Uh, so there he is with his cape uh, fluttering in the sky 
and he spots uh, a child touching uh, another child. And he might be like, Oi! You! Uh, shouted Mr. Clean. Don't touch too much. That's what you might say. Don't touch too much. Sounds like an interesting catchphrase. Um, and then what you would do is new line, new speaker. Sorry, replied the children. Okay, and then in his next one, he might be finding someone who's not washed their hands after they've eaten, and he might tell them. He might have a discussion with someone about why it's really important to make sure you're washing your hands at all times. He might talk about why it's really important not to shake hands, okay, and to use your elbow fist to talk about reducing spreading germs as much as possible. Really important that you're not hanging out with any grandparents or elderly people, and make sure that you're keeping to your family unit and not spreading between different families. So that could be your comic strip if you want. You could do going to a park, you could do a superhero, you could do anything. You do your drawings and make your comic strip on one side. If you've got lined paper, you want to write your dialogue on the lined paper. If not, just do the work on the back. And that is your activity for today in English. So, good luck. Maybe save all of these and I'll have a little look at them when we all get back. Bye.